G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at each team in the AFL and coming up with what is that club's biggest headache or the biggest concern in 2024. We are getting very close to the preseason action getting underway, so if you're looking for a channel who's making plenty of AFL content and you're not subscribed, this would be a great place to subscribe to keep up with everything AFL. Now let's crack straight into the content and I'm gonna go through reverse alphabetical order from Western Bulldogs all the way through to Adelaide and come up with one major concern that each club will be pondering throughout 2024, or at least in my estimation. So let's start with the Western Bulldogs and I think the, the one that comes to mind straight away is probably just replacing Bailey Smith. Now, the Bulldogs don't really have a shortage of midfielders as such, and it is a quality midfield on paper, that's for sure. Uh, that being said, Bailey Smith has A-grade potential. Now, you can come up with your own opinion as to whether he's an A-grader right now. I think he was on a really good trajectory in 2021 and then sort of dipped a little bit naturally and played a little bit out of position as well. But at the same time, a genuine match winner and a genuinely good player who could have really had a breakout year. We won't know because he's done an ACL. So finding the solution to filling that gap in the midfield is a little bit of a headache for the Bulldogs going into 2024. Thankfully, there are some internal solutions. So they've traded for James Harms. Caleb Poulter as well, I think has shown some good form on a wing for the Western Bulldogs. Even Jack McRae, who sort of got pushed out to different roles, maybe he finds a little bit more on ball time. There are levers they can pull internally. And there's also Riley Sanders to consider, who I think uh, will probably be a good rising star chance and a very ready-made player considering the role that he's going to play. So I think there are some internal solutions, but that being said, replacing Bailey Smith and his output won't be necessarily an easy task for the Bulldogs. For the West Coast Eagles, the biggest headache, amongst others, is probably just from maintaining a fit and healthy list. That is probably the number one thing of most importance to West Coast this year. The injuries that club has seen has been historic, and it's not so much just about it affecting the ladder position. It affects the development of young players in particular. It affects how competitive the team can be week to week. It affects how well they can adapt to a new game style. So that is fundamentally the most important thing for the Eagles. If they can have an injury list that is at least normal, and at this point of the preseason, touch wood, it is currently normal. It's been a few injuries here and there, but you expect that in an AFL setup. Uh, but if it gets anywhere like the last two years, it's going to be a joke of a season. For the Sydney Swans, now that they have you know, recruited at least the key back in Joel Hamlin, they've recruited a Ruckman in Brody Grundy, they've fixed a couple of gaps there. I still think the biggest headache they have is probably just adequately replacing Callum Mills or covering him for at least half a season, because we're talking about a team that's probably sees themselves in contention this year. And Callum Mills was a really important player. I don't think his output was the same in 23 as it was in 22, but still a big loss. And I do know that they've recruited Taylor Adams, so I'm not suggesting that they won't find a solution for it. But nonetheless, replacing a player of his quality for half a season in a year where every win's going to count for the Swans, that I think remains probably their biggest headache. For St Kilda, the headache that will plague them is probably just rectifying their forward line efficiency. So I think they were one of the least efficient teams ever inside 50 last year. In fact, I've got stats for you. They were ranked last in the competition last year for forward line inefficiency. So that's converting inside 50s to scores. They were ranked last in that stat with 39.7%, which for context was the eighth lowest percentage of that nature in AFL history. Now, there were some injury issues. We know Max King only played the 11 games. Membry played seven, I think, from memory as well. I think they've got some good smalls and medium types there, so they I back them in to rectify that, but that is obviously the number one thing they've got to focus on. For Richmond, it's a tough one to really gauge their expectations, but I think a headache for them will be the fitness of certain stars, in particular, Tom Lynch. Now, I don't want to blow this out of proportion. I do know that Tom Lynch might be back earlier in the season and, and could still have a good season. But, you know, he hasn't played since round four of last year and battled a pretty serious foot injury by the seams of it. And, uh, you know, it's been talked a lot about his rehab over this summer. I think he's a really key player in the Tigers getting competitive again because I do think it's a top-heavy list and they can't afford too many of their gun stars to, to be missing football. So I'd say Tom Lynch and his fitness and getting him able to play quality football is probably their biggest headache right now. For Port Adelaide, I don't know if there is a really obvious one. I'd say, I'd say one concern probably is just getting the new defensive dynamic to work because they kind of just transplanted in a couple of key defenders and it's going to be a new look back six. Tom Jonas is retired. They've got Asava Radigalia and Zerk Thatcher to back up Ali Alia in that defense. And on paper, that's a good mix. But getting them all to play with synergy and play well early, that is going to be key for a side that is in contention. So bit of a soft one, I suppose you could say, but I don't think Port Adelaide have any clear deficiencies that need real work yet. 
For North Melbourne, I think there is a clear positional headache for the Roos going into 2024, and that is their defense. I don't think on paper that defense is well equipped to really restrict oppositions in 2024. And it is only on paper, and I could be wrong, but you got Aiden Core, maybe Charlie Common down back. Griffin Logue will come back in the middle of the year, I would have thought, uh, but nonetheless, an important player for them that's unavailable through injury. Combin has played nine games of footy. Toby Pink has 25, but yet to debut. Callum Dawson's played five games, and Biggie Nuon has played just the one for Richmond. So I think getting a mix that works for at least half a season, that is going to be the big biggest positional concern or overall concern for North Melbourne. For Melbourne, again, this one has been fairly well documented, but again, I'd say it's the scoring efficiency. So they were number one for inside 50s last year, but only seventh for total points scored. So they have had their issues actually putting scoreboard pressure on the opposition. And in particular in the finals, we saw a very inaccurate Melbourne. Seven goals, 11 against Collingwood, nine goals, 17 against Carlton. You know, both of those games were close losses. In a way, it's positive because if you simply rectify that one issue of scoring efficiency, then Melbourne become one of the best teams in the competition in theory. Well, they pretty much already are, but you know what I mean. There's one clear thing that they've got to rectify there. And there's some hope on the horizon. You know, Harrison Petty, how does he go as a forward? I think Bailey Fritch playing a, a full season as well goes a long way. Cozzy Pickett could take his game to the next level. There's solutions in there for Melbourne, but I think that is the one clear thing. For Hawthorne, I think there's not an obvious headache. Uh, if I'm looking at the list positionally, I have talked about their key back mix going into 2024, and it's not dire by any stretch of the imagination, especially when it's spearheaded by James Sisley. But I'm thinking the guys behind that. So James Blank played 15 games last year. Then you have Sam Frost playing 18 games. I'm not really too sure who the next in line would be after that. I know Will McCabe was just drafted a bit young, you'd think. And Granger Barras seems to be earmarked for a forward line role as well. So I'd say it's just getting the mix that works. Behind James Sisley, I think there's a big gap to guys like Blank and Frost. For the Giants, again, this one is it's tricky to isolate something that really didn't go well last year. And I think the only one I can think of is full season consistency. Now, you could just put that down to the fact that they were under the leadership of a brand new coach who was coming off a season, you know, what were they, finished bottom three or something like the previous year. But that's pretty much the only thing I can think of. Just getting through the season consistently and getting a high finish because we know they play well in finals. Positionally, I think they've come a long way. I think backline is absolutely fantastic, has the potential to be the best backline in the game this year. Midfield is strong, and the forward line wasn't that strong, but I think they took some real strides. We saw some more consistency from Hogan and Riccardi. Toby Green's in that mix too, so uh, a real lack of clear options there. I would just say the full season consistency. For the Gold Coast Suns, this one is not going to be necessarily an on-field one. I think their biggest headache is probably the contract status of Ben King. Now, hopefully, they rectify this in the first month of the season. We don't have to talk about it anymore. That being said, he is out of contract this year, and I believe there are triggers in his contract where he can automatically extend his contract if he wishes for an extra two years, which does take him to free agency. But I'd imagine this is probably going to be a story that swirls for a little bit of the season and Gold Coast will want to get his signature on paper as soon as possible. For the Cats, their biggest headache, I think, probably comes down to midfield depth. I think very really good back line. Um, and the forward line speaks for itself with Jeremy Cameron, Tom Hawkins, Ollie Henry, Grind Myers had a great year, Tyson Stengel, Dangerfield rolls through there. It's just star-studded, but the midfield is a clear gap. I talked about it before, but you know, I think their top ball winner last year was Tom Stewart. Generally, your top ball winner, it could be a defender, but generally it's got to be someone from the midfield. And there was a big gap. Cam Guthrie averaged the most touches, and I think he played six games. And he only averaged 22 touches a game. So it's, it's getting ball winners and depth in that midfield. I think when Cam Guthrie... Uh, obviously missed through injury. They really also felt the absence of Joel Selwood in that time. So again, solutions could be internal. Um, you know, Tanner Bruns on the way up, Jai Clark as well. Max Holmes could spend a little bit more time on ball, but I think that is the clear gap on Geelong's list and might prove to be a headache for them. Then we've got Essendon. And again, I, I won't look at this one from a positional point of view because they had a great off-season recruiting for a lot of the gaps that they had. Added some ruck depth, got that key position defender that they wanted. They added a small forward in Gresham. They got a uh, sort of midfielder wingman in Dersma. So positionally, they're kind of sweet. So I, I would just draw back on the consistency of performance. And amongst a few other teams, Essendon's inconsistency of performance, or at least their gap between their best and their worst, was arguably the largest of any team other than maybe West Coast and Frio. Probably West Coast is number one in that category. But you know what I mean, a, a really poor end of the season. So I think without laboring on it too much, I think getting a consistent 24 round season 
in terms of application and mindset from this Essendon group that is not untalented, that is going to be the biggest headache. That, that's what the fans want to see, an absence of performances like against GWS. Now we're at the Fremantle Football Club, and I would suggest that their biggest headache is replacing, in particular, Lockie Schultz, because Lockie Schultz was their second leading goal scorer this year, I think tied with Walters just behind Jai Amos. So on the plus side, they've got their key forward talent. Jai Amos emerged as an absolute young gun this year, but it's not to be understated that Lockie Schultz did contribute a lot of goals for Fremantle consistently and replacing that is not going to be a really obvious solution. To some extent as well, I think they're gonna have that headache a little bit replacing Liam Henry. I'm not too convinced just yet about their, their wing options, and I could be wrong, you know. Who knows about Jeremy Sharp? Nathan O'Driscoll could take his game to the next level. Does Heath Chapman push up? Who knows? I'm more concerned about where the goal is gonna come from, and while you know there's some good, tall talent there, they're now at the point where you rip a top two goal scorer out of this side that was already not great at putting scores on the board. A year after, I think Rory Lobb might have been close to their leading goal kicker in 2022. Fremantle finding a way to replace those goals is going to be important. For Collingwood, this one has been well documented again, and uh, it's, it's interesting to see a premiership team that on paper, obviously is star-studded, but it isn't super balanced. And in particular, I'm talking about their tall forward mix in the absence of Dan McStay, who's done an ACL. So again, you know, I'm assured by Pies fans that they're in good hands with Ash Johnson. I also have talked about Reef McInnes on this channel, and I'm intrigued to see how that works. And I think Colin are a good enough side that they probably could paper over the cracks to some extent, but I'm not completely convinced because their starting mix of Majacek, uh, Mason Cox, and Ash Johnson, as a non-Pies fan who admittedly doesn't know Ash Johnson as deeply as their fans do, let me just say that I would be surprised if his output matches the optimism I'm seeing from Pies fans. So that's not me firing a shot. I'm just saying clearly, getting a tall forward presence is going to be a headache for Collingwood this year. For Carlton, I think their clear biggest headache is the form of former Coleman medalist Harry Mackay, whose forward line of inefficiency was you know, well documented during 2023. And we know Kerno's pulled out two back-to-back -back career best seasons and God, if he wins a third common, I wouldn't even be shocked. However, 21 games this year from Mackay, and he kicked 29 goals, 29, in comparison to Kerno, who kicked 81, 44. There shouldn't be that much of a gap between two common medalists playing in the same forward line. So I know that you understand that already, but why is it important to Carlton? Well, they can't rely entirely on one key forward to structure their forward line. If Charlie Kerno touch wood, misses a period of football, Harry Mackay has got to step up into that void and produce something resembling the common medal form that we've seen in the past. For the Brisbane Lions, this one is also not clear. I think it's a very well balanced team. No real clear deficiencies. Very close to winning the premiership last year. So pulling out weaknesses and highlighting them is tricky. So then I would point to probably the recovery of Tom Dode and Will Ashcroft. Now, neither of those players were in their side in last year's final series. So maybe not the strongest point, but Tom Dode, I think could add a lot to this team. And I know Will Ashcroft is obviously on a trajectory of potentially being an absolute star midfielder of the competition. So getting those guys right, as fit as possible. In particular, Dode, I think is gonna be important from a structural point of view is that third tall sort of quality defender. Lions fans might be watching this and saying, you know, we cope well without them to this point. It's not a massive headache. And that's probably true, but it's probably the biggest concern that I can think of. And then we've got the Adelaide Crows to finish off. And I think the clear answer here is probably just goal accuracy. So last year, and I've quoted these stats to you before, but they lost six games where they had more scoring shots and uh, lost five games by under two goals. Although I do acknowledge that one of them was the controversial Sydney loss. So I think that's fair to suggest. And it's kind of crazy that Adelaide was still the top scoring side. And yet it felt like they left a lot of goals on the table. They're in a good spot. I, I think their key backs are probably the weak point of their best 22, but they're not in bad hands. I think Worrell's a decent player. Jordan Butts is decent. Like it's not really a clear headache for them as it were. Whereas I think goal scoring accuracy, like that, that probably will directly contribute to them losing games more if they don't sort of improve it. Anyway, guys, that was me trying to have a crack at every club's biggest headache for 2024. So let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. As always, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.